Looks good. Let me mm. try some of this one. Edible you, flower. Do you need the flower? Mm. Mm. This is one of our favorites. It's produced very well here on board. Cool. Try some. Right now in New York City, almost all of our food comes from outside. It's not as fresh because of that, and it's much more expensive. We also have the output, so all of the garbage that's created from the packaging of this food coming into the city. So it started with an idea, you know, what if, like clean water is a human right, what if food could be that way too? And what could a city like New York look like, and how could it function if that um, was the case here? That was kind of the thinking behind doing swale, was that if we could if we could do the space on the water, we could travel from place to place. Where we were in the South Bronx is definitely considered the biggest food desert in the United States. Mary, she pointed out to us, um, it's illegal to grow fruits and vegetables in public parks. There's no laws about growing vegetables and fruits and herbs on the water. so. We found a loophole <laughs> to get around. Swale was an interesting kind of provocation. Of course, New York City's not going to feed itself from one floating barge, but she can capture the imagination of individuals that visit, of kids telling them, yes, you're allowed to pick this food. What conversation do you want to start? Have you ever planted any fruits or vegetables? Do you eat fresh fruits and vegetables? What if these kinds of spaces could be available in our public parks here in New York City? How we use urban land. What if our systems of food supply and distribution looked a little bit different? <gasps> People will start to care about the plants on swale and then they'll start to care about the soil and then they start to care about the water. All those things, they end up coming up when we think about picking food ourselves. It really matters that we get together and work together on things that can be bigger than what we can do on our own. Our cities face many different kinds of crises. We have the crises of aging infrastructure, of affordability, of climate change. We need government policies, we need scientific inquiry, but we also need creative exploration of how we frame and understand and talk about those problems. That's, I think, what helps us envision new futures. I don't know what it's going to be like here in the future. I don't imagine that it's going to be any easier than it is now. It's pretty hard now, so there's something that, sadly, is utopian about this and it's utopian because we're in a time where it feels like it's such a stretch to have food considered a right or a service or public so that's maybe dystopic too. <laughs>